Welcome back, guys. I got another short episode of Let's Learn Computer Science for you today. I got a different camera angle just because this is where my webcam has to be for my online testing so they can see everything I'm doing. As far as the content of my YouTube channel goes, I think I'm going to prioritize more of this educational content as I continue with my degree in computer science. I recently purchased a new keyboard. I might do a review on that and some, some typing practice, kind of reinforce the good practices, the home row, all that stuff. Probably less video game content for the time being. So let's get into this episode about compilers and the assembly language. Oop, misspelled assembly there. But let's get right in. So a compiler is a translation layer that translates your code into a language that your machine can understand. So a compiler takes the code written in a high-level language and translates it to machine code. Some compilers first pass code through an assembler and then to machine code. Compilers create an executable. They are not ran as they are interpreted, right? So there's a difference between compiled languages and interpreted languages. Uh, this is why you see, for example, on lots of Linux machines, you can just run Python scripts on them because it's interpreted directly on the machine it's interpreted line by line so they translate one line and execute it and then they translate the next line and execute it versus a compiler has to create this compiled file and then you run that file um, if you've ever used c before there's like a program c make to kind of expedite that process but i remember coding in c you'd write your stuff and then i'd have to have this c make file so i can just press a button and it creates the executable, names it specifically, and then runs it immediately. But sometimes that can be a hassle. So on to assembly. If we're going to talk about assembly language. I'm going to touch on the three most important things, that being arithmetic, load and store functionality, which is like uh, transferring of data, and then registers. So arithmetic is going to be your adding and subtracting. Uh, to add or subtract two numbers in assembly, use the following syntax. So if I say add, and then I give it three operands, that would be equal to this x equals y plus z. So if you see anything about programming or you know anything about programming, this is kind of the form that assignment operations take place, where you put the thing you want to assign first and set it equal to the value you want to assign it to. So that works very similarly to how add is written. And I guess I don't know if other instruction sets take the order of operations differently. I've seen before where the last one is the assignment, but for most commonly used instruction sets, the leftmost is your assignment. And then similarly for subtraction, it's just going to go left from right, x equals y minus z. So there we go. Next, we're going to talk about registers. So registers are typically a size of 64 bits called double word on all uh, x64 computers. If you're using a 32-bit computer, then it's going to be 32 bits. Um, registers act as variables for assembly. One major difference between variables in a programming language and variables in assembly is going to be that there are only 32 of them, with the last one always being equal to zero. With only three operands, the challenge becomes using only three registers at a time. So. And as the number of registers increases, the clock cycle frequency can go down. So you could imagine if I have 128 registers and I have something stored in the 128th register or 127th register, if I need to search for that in an operation, it might take some time to get all the way down there and my clock cycle frequency is only as fast as the slowest operation. So if it has to wait for this last thing to happen, then that's going to dramatically slow things down. And 32 kind of seemed to be the magic number um, as far as the creators of like risk architecture goes for complexity, but also uh, speediness for performance. Let's go on to the next slide here. So now we're going to touch on register spilling. With 32 registers, maybe it's not enough for more complex programs. When there aren't enough physical registers available, variables are stored in memory instead. This is not ideal because RAM is slower than CPU registers for a number of reasons. For example, an arithmetic 
instruction can read two registers, right? It can read the Y and Z. It can calculate them, it can add them together, and then it can write it to the third register, X. While a transfer instruction can only read one and write one. We'll go on transfer instructions next. But a transfer instruction is required if you're retrieving something from memory. So now we're going to touch on transfer instructions. Two most commonly used ones are load and store. So to load an item is to grab it from memory and put it in a register. And to store an item is to take a value in a register and put it in a specific block of memory. So this is going to be the syntax for the load and store operations. Load is L-D-U-R and store is S-T-U-R. Store. Loader. Storer. Loader. So the syntax is going to be your instruction and then the destination register. And then in square brackets, you're going to put the base register with a comma and the offset of the memory location. So the way this works is if I have my base register as an offset of like 5,000, but I want to store it in position one, uh, I can say the value of my base register with an offset of one or an offset of eight if you're working with eight bytes. So here's an example. Assume that R1, register one, holds the memory address 5,000. An offset of eight would store the value in memory address 5,008 to register zero. So this would be your load functionality. If I'm grabbing something from memory, I say, go to this memory address and store it, the value, into R0. And the reason for this register 1 holding this specific memory address might be the start of an array or the start of a list, and you need to search through that list. Let's go on to the last slide here. Just as a review, we talked about compilers, how they translate it to assembly, the assembly code is written with a specific instruction set, and these instruction sets can vary. And the reasoning of all of this is the speediness, the performance, how quick it is. Um, there's 32 registers inside of your CPU, and it does things very quickly. A lot of the overhead for programs is on the operating system. It's waiting to grab something from memory. But with a register, it has access to all of them, and it can process through it very quickly. So that concludes this video, and thank you very much.